सर इफ आई इंटरवेन एट दिस स्टेज ऑफ द डिबेट इट इज नॉट फॉर द पर्पज ऑफ सेइंग मच ऑन द फैक्टर्स विच लेड टू डिवेल्युएशन बिकॉज दैट इज अ मैटर विच हैज ऑलरेडी बीन डील्ड विद बाय द फाइनेंस मिनिस्टर बट आई वुड लाइक टू कन्फाइन माई रिमार्क्स मेनली टू वन एस्पेक्ट of the problem which has been emphasized by more speakers than one and that is with regard to the effects of devaluation on production in india it was some comfort to find that in some matters at least we had support from strange quarters i mean my honorable friends the previous speakers who very ably justified the large imports of capital goods which have come to this country in the course of the last year so far as the effect of devaluation on production is concerned let us remember that it is not a devaluation along but two other important factors that have come to play during the last few months one is our decision to restrict imports which was announced almost a few days before the announcement of devaluation which had a reluctant effect on the prices of commodities in india especially on those commodities which were being imported in large bulks during the last one year secondly the rise in the cost of production of essential commodities in this country for which region unfortunately we have not been able to check the rise in the cost of living over and above this devaluation has come now sir the question which has been asked by many speakers is what steps government purposes to take for the purpose of controlling rise in prices in india and for the purpose of increasing production for after all let us not forget that if we want to import less and export more we will have to produce more in india if we want to import less and at the same time serve the essential economic needs of the people we will have to produce more in india i am not going to take your time in disclosing the large number of schemes which government has prepared in the course of the last two years some of which are ready to be implemented now it will be a very serious matter not only for the government but for the house and the country as well if several schemes have to be postponed one of my honorable friends said in the course of the debate today that many of these schemes are developed in a haphazard manner i join issue there we have heard a lot about the need for greater coordination i am aware that there is room for greater coordination not only amongst the different ministries but also between the center and the states and if i may say so between the government and the members of this house and if i may add a little further between the government and the people of this country in fact i feel more and more today that there is considerable cleavage between the government and the people because of lack of information 
on the part of the people of the steps which government has taken in the course of the last two years in spite of tremendous odds and difficulties. Here, if I may say, in all humility is a responsibility which members of this house, particularly those belonging to the great congress organization, have to take upon themselves. You have to go to the people and have got to inspire them to the needs of the situation and to explain to them what government has done so that you may get the largest possible response from the people. That gap has come into existence. Let us not throw at each other and say that government should do it and you should not. But the fact remains that the gap is there and the question is how that gap can be filled up and people enthusiasm can be fully rushed. So far as government's schemes are concerned, I might very briefly allude to one or two schemes so that the house will be able to realize how their non-implementation may adversely affect the economic conditions of the country. The house is aware that we have entered <coughs> into a contract with a well-known Swiss firm for the manufacture of machine tools. <coughs> it is a big scheme which will cost India nearly rupees 150 to 280 crores. We are importing today about rupees 80 crores worth machine tools. The Prime Minister pointed out yesterday and quite rightly that this is one of the basic industries which must develop in this country if we are going to progress industrially. How far that scheme will be affected now is more than what I can say because we have to settle the question of priorities and decide which are the schemes with which we will go ahead. The same principle applies with regard to the production of steel. After considerable efforts, we have completed our labors.